these children are about to receive their first Holy Communion in the Catholic Church. It's a big day in their young lives. They believe in God. They believe in His Son, Jesus. They believe simply because that is what they've been taught. But when they grow older and question, what then will they believe? They will require faith to believe in God, but that is not a difficult concept. When we look around us and ponder the magnitude and beauty and order of the world and the vast universe which surrounds us, we can choose to see and admire the power and benevolence of a mastermind of creation. And the children will find that history supports the story. They have been told of the existence of Jesus. There was once a man, a tall and strong man, who went through the towns and cities, teaching things never heard before. That man attracted people and everyone who heard him was astounded. He gave advice, spoke about his father, and called brothers, all those who listened to him. He performed miracles. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He walked on water. But one day, some men who were envious of him swore to kill him. They were mean individuals who were afraid to lose their own prestige. The untrustworthy who feared his word because his speech was direct. So they had him arrested and crucified between two thieves. He died forgiving his executioners. That, in the most simple terms, is the story of Jesus Christ, and it is true. But what of that mystifying teaching that the communion host, having been consecrated in the Mass, is now truly the flesh of Christ, and that the wine in the miracle of the Eucharist is now truly the blood of Christ. In fact, the teaching of the Church goes even further, that in the Eucharist is the living presence of Jesus Christ, just as real and just as alive as he was on earth more than 2,000 years ago. Yes, Jesus Christ, truly there, flesh, blood, soul, and divinity. Can that really be the truth? And if it is the truth, why do we not see Catholics eager to approach the altar in greater numbers at every opportunity to receive communion and be embraced by Jesus, the Son of God? Let us look for the answers through the eyes of Jesus. Scripture foretold the coming of Jesus. The Gospels, written by his followers, make it clear he came to earth to save us. It was written, he has saved others and he cannot save himself. If he is king, let him come down from the cross. I did not come down from the cross, because I had not come to save myself, but rather I came to save you. 
The Gospels also make it clear that while Jesus became man and died so that sins may be forgiven, the gates of heaven do not open automatically. We must go before him clean of sin and with our hands full of what we have done for him on earth. If you do not look to heaven, you shall leave us beings deprived of motive. The highest goal of your life is union with me in heaven. It is difficult to believe that a God who stands in need of no one should take human flesh and die for the love of men who are his creatures. It was the enormous gift of a loving God. It was the ultimate sacrifice. Remember, in olden times, to win favour with your God even a pagan god, it was the tradition to sacrifice an animal and then eat it. There are ancient cultures still existing who practice the same tradition. So when Jesus gave us the gift of the Eucharist at the Last Supper, it was consistent with that tradition. The great difference being that he is the victim sacrifice and he invites us to participate in his great sacrifice by eating his flesh and drinking his blood. That was a concept that was to trouble many from the days of Jesus right through to today and Jesus knew that it would. Well before the Last Supper, at the town of Capernaum, Jesus made the almost unbelievable promise that he would give his own flesh and blood to be the food for our souls. He prepared his audience well. On the day before, he performed the miracle of the loaves and fishes. Five loaves and two fish fed thousands. Of all his miracles on earth, never were so many people so directly involved. On the night before, he walked on water. They should have been ready to believe in him. I am the living bread that has come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, they shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. That was almost one year before the Last Supper. But even then, Jesus knew that doubts about the reality of the sacramental gift of his body and blood would persist in the centuries to come. And so it would be that Jesus would intervene miraculously to endorse the truth of this sacrament. Here in Lanciano in Italy, in the eighth century, a priest who 